But he was talking about partaking of him, partaking of his flesh, the flesh that he, that he was going to give for us on the cross, his body, and of his blood, which is his life. Look at verse 64. But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe in it, and who also it was that would betray him. And he was saying, For this reason I said to you that no one can come to me unless it is granted to him from the Father. As a result, look at verse 66, 666. As a result of this, Many of his disciples, what did they do? They turned back. They turned back. They withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. You want to know what the mark of the beast is? Those that turn away from the gospel of peace. Those that turn from grace back to law. Now, you may have never heard it that way, but that's the spirit of Antichrist. Makes sense. They're turning to Jesus. Okay? Because it's anti. What is Antichrist? Anti what Christ has accomplished for us through his cross. Amen. So, let's go back to 2 John. Verse 9. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ, does not have God. And one who abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Okay? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, missed, I meant to start with verse 7 again. For many deceivers have gone into the world. Those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh, this is the deceiver and the antichrist. Again, remember, they went from him. What does it mean, Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh? What it means is that God became man. Okay? Philippians chapter 2. Okay? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although though he existed in the form of God, he did not think it robbery to be equal with God, but he humbled himself. And he made himself of no reputation. And he took on the form of man. God became man. God took on flesh and blood like the man that he created. Amen. That's what it means. And that in his flesh and in blood, what did he do? He gave his life for all of us. He died on that cross so that you and I might live. Okay? So he says in verse 8, So watch yourselves that you do not lose what, what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. What does that mean? That you may come into the fullness of God. That you may continue to press forward into what God has called you to be and manifest the glory and the presence of God in the earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 9. Anyone that goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. And the one who abides in the teaching of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Now, look at verse, this is important. Verse 10. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house, and do not give him a greeting. The King James says, don't even bid him Godspeed. Folks, this is, this is, this is serious stuff. Amen. Why is this so important? Because they'll, they'll deceive your mind like the serpent deceived Eve and turn you into another gospel, to another Jesus by a different spirit. Look at verse 11. 
For the one who gives them greeting participates in his evil deeds. If you receive that, that other gospel by another Jesus and by a different spirit, you will become partaker of that deed. That's simply saying that you can be deceived. Can you, are you guys getting this? Amen. Yes. Okay. Because this I'm, may be a little complicated, but this is, this is a good teaching this morning. You need to know this. See, don't let nobody take your crown. Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, don't let no man take your crown. Don't let no man take your peace. Don't let no man take what you have received through Christ. So back to Galatians 1, in verse 6, I am amazed that you are so quickly discerning him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another, only there are some who are disturbing you and want to pervert or distort or turn around the gospel of Christ. Can you see that? But even if we, Paul saying, me, Paul, and those that are with me, or even if an angel from heaven shall come and preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, that person is to be accursed. And he said it again. I'm going to say it again. If any man is preaching to you a gospel that's different than the one you have received, and that person is somebody you got to stay away from. For am I now seeking the favor of man, he says, or God? Or am I striving to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Now, this is important. Look at verse 11. For I would have you to know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Wow. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Amen? Look at this. Neither did I receive it from man, nor was I taught it, taught it but I received it, how? Revelation. Through a revelation of Jesus Christ. How do you get through today? Through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Education will not give you a revelation. Amen. Instruction will not give you injunction. <laughs> okay? Instruction won't give you injunctive, injunctive, is that a word, injunctive, into, injunction into the kingdom. Just because you find a mouse in a cookie jar doesn't make him a cookie. That's right. Come spend the night in my garage and see that'll make you a car. Just because you go to church on Sunday and midweek doesn't make you a Christian. If you're not receiving the revelation of Jesus Christ, you're not hearing the gospel. Can you hear where I'm coming from? The gospel is what? Grace and peace. That's the gospel. I want to show you, look at Acts chapter 13. I'm getting ready to close this thing. Perhaps it would be safe to say that through all of this to, to, to obtain a revelation of Jesus is not just getting it sunk into your head and believing in your head, but it's got to enter into your heart and have it belief and confirmation and change your heart. Yes. Yes. You can study it to, to, to your blue in the It's face. not head knowledge. As long as it, as long as it stays in here, it's not it's yeah. to transfer to here. It's not just head knowledge, it's heart knowledge. That's why he said in in Hebrews chapter 8, I believe it is. Remember he said, the covenant that I'm going to make with them is not like the old covenant. 
See, what, what happened under the Old Covenant? The law was given on what? On tablets of stone. Mm -hmm. He said, under this New Covenant, I'm going to put my laws into their heart. Okay? I'm going to write it upon their hearts and I'm going to put it in their minds. You see? Look, Walter, this is it. This man has got to get it before this man. Because if just this man gets it, then you ain't really got it. You see? Paul got what he got by revelation. Why? Because he spent three years in the wilderness after his conversion. He didn't, he said, he didn't comfort with flesh and blood. Acts 13. I don't want to read all of this. He's given a testimony about how God raised Jesus from the dead. And if, if you look at verse 30. It says, but God raised him from the dead, talking about Jesus. And for many days he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. And the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people. And we preach to you the good news. How many know that the gospel is good news? The gospel of Jesus Christ is never bad news. Of the promise made to the father, made to the father. Look at verse thirty-three. That God has fulfilled this promise to our children, in that He raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second psalm. He says, "You are my son. Today I have begotten you." As for the fact that He raised him up from the dead, no longer to return to decay. He spoke in this way, saying, I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore, he also, he also says in another psalm, you will not allow your holy one to undergo decay or to see corruption. This is one of the psalms that David wrote. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, he fell asleep. What does that mean? That he died. And he was laid among his fathers and he underwent, he underwent decay. His body decayed. So what he's saying is when David spoke this, he wasn't speaking about himself. He was prophesying about Jesus. Okay? But him who God raised did not undergo decay. He didn't see corruption. Now look at this, verse 38 and 39. you got to see this scripture. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him, through who? Through Jesus Christ, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Tell your neighbor, God has forgiven my sins of the past, present, and future. Hebrews 10, 14, for by one sacrifice he has perfected once and for all times those that have been sanctified. And through him, everyone who believes is freed, look at this, from all the things from which you cannot be free, how? Through the law of Moses. Therefore, take heed so that the things spoken of in the prophets may not come upon you. Behold, you scoffers, and marvel and perish. For I am accomplishing a work in your days, a work which will never, you, you will never believe, though someone should describe it to you. And you know what he was talking about here? He was talking about what was going to happen in 70 A.D to those Jewish believers who refused to believe the gospel that they were going to perish. That's what he was telling them there. Okay? 
A lot of people read that today and they think that's for us today. Remember, remember this. The Bible was not written to you and me. It was written for you and me. The Bible was written to those in their day. And this and, and, and the book of Acts and Galatians was written anywhere from 58 AD through 55, before 55 AD. Okay? Jerusalem, the Battle of Jerusalem, and Titus invaded Jerusalem when? In 70 AD. Okay? So Galatians and Corinthians and Acts and all of these all of these things were written before 70 AD. As a matter of fact, in case you don't know this, the book of Revelation was written about 65 AD. A lot of the things that the book of Revelation describes are things that happened in 70 AD. Okay? I know some are going to disagree with me who are watching this video or listening to the CD, but study the scripture. Search it out for yourself. Be, be a Berean. Okay? What's a Berean? The Apostle Paul said in Acts 18 that the Bereans were more noble or more honorable than those at Thessalonica because they searched the scriptures daily to see whether these things were true or not. Don't just search the scripture or the scriptures, study the history. Okay? This Bible that I have here, or that I have at home, I have a King James Bible at home, in the back of the book has got the whole story of what happened in the destruction of Jerusalem. How Titus of Rome, a captain of, of the Roman army, invaded Jerusalem in 64 A.D. And there was a, a battle that happened that, that lasted four years. And there was so much bloodletting and so much, I mean, excuse me, it describes a tremendous battle. And the people that died there, I mean, it's horrific. And all of that had to happen in order that the animal sacrifices and those that were still keeping the law 70 years after Jesus would cease. That's why all that took place. But history tells us that not one Christian believer perished in that battle. But every Jewish believer uh, Jewish or Hebrew that didn't believe, those are the ones that perished because they didn't believe. So understand this. I'm closing. That it is through him, through who? Through Jesus Christ, that everyone who believes is freed from all the things that you cannot be free through the law of Moses. What law of Moses was he specifically speaking about? He was speaking about the Ten Commandments. Okay? Specifically, nobody can keep the Ten Commandments. Unless you fulfill the law of Christ. Which is the law of Christ? To love your neighbor as yourself. To love one another. To love the Lord your God. <coughs> with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength and your labor as yourself. So don't receive a different gospel. Don't let those <coughs> that come to you with a distorted gospel with a perverted gospel that turned around. Don't even listen to them. Don't even listen to that. Okay? If you're listening to this video, if you're watching this video, and you're going to a, a church, a fellowship, where they beat you up with this Bible, 
And they tell you that you've got to keep laws and rituals, and you've got to dress in a certain manner, and that you've got to keep the Sabbath on a certain day, and that you can only be baptized under a certain name and a certain formula. And that you have to do all the laws of Moses. Don't walk away. Run away from that fellowship. And find a place where they minister the gospel of peace and the gospel of grace. Amen. And I say this to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, as we close this meeting, I thank you for all of these that are here this morning and those that are watching or listening to the CD or watching this video. Father, I pray for peace. I pray that the grace and the peace of God may touch their hearts and their lives through Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for those that are sick, those that are hurting, those that are running, those that are confused, those that are backsliding. Father God, touch their hearts, touch their lives, heal and restore. For we speak a word of peace and a word of life into their being right now. And we do it through the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And everybody said amen. 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 God bless amen. you this morning.